Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of genetic information, variation and relationships, and in particular, on meiosis. I'm Manisha from Study Mind, where we help you to revise A-level biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson four of eight in this tutorial, covering meiosis. This is the fourth video in our series of eight lessons on the topic of DNA and genes. In the last lesson, we looked at gene and chromosome mutations. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. We will be looking at mutations, meiosis, and finally some sources of genetic diversity. Here are the AQA specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a read through them before we begin. We'll start off by looking at meiosis. Earlier, we learnt about mitosis, which is how somatic or body cells divide and how asexual reproduction can occur. Most of meiosis is very similar to mitosis. Let's quickly revisit and understand mitosis. The parent cell starts off with two copies of each chromosome, 1 to 23. This will make up 46 homologous chromosomes. Only two chromosome pairs are shown here, that for chromosome 1 and that for chromosome 2. In a real cell, there are 23 pairs. One copy is maternal and the other copy is paternal. In interphase, each of the chromosomes will duplicate. Every chromosome will turn into a pair of chromatids. There are two P1 chromosomes, two M1 chromosomes, two P2 chromosomes and two M2 chromosomes. Next, the cell divides during mitosis. Each daughter cell gets one P1 chromosome, one M1 chromosome, one P2 chromosome and one M2 chromosome. Now let's look at meiosis. We start off with the same which are 46 chromosomes. Again, each chromosome will duplicate to form two sister chromatids joined at a centromere. So right now, we have two of each chromosome. At this stage in mitosis, each centromere would split and each daughter cell would get a copy of a paternal cell and a maternal chromosome. However, in meiosis, the centromeres will not split. Instead, the chromatids will stay together. Each daughter cell gets half of a chromatid pair. So one daughter cell has two copies of maternal chromosome 1 and two copies of paternal chromosome 2. The other daughter cell has two copies of paternal chromosome 1 and maternal chromosome 2. Another thing to understand is that the parts of the chromosomes we can swap over in a process called crossing over. We will learn more about this later, but you can see on the diagram how certain parts of the chromosomes have been interchanged. This adds an extra element of variation. In the final step, we have meiosis II. This is the second division. Remember, Mitosis only has one division. On the right, we can see a diagram of an egg cell, the female gamete, surrounded by lots of sperm cells, the male gamete. 
During fertilization, they form a zygote, which then divides by mitosis to produce more and more cells. Meiosis is necessary for proper sexual reproduction to occur. Without meiosis, there are no sex cells and hence no fertilization. Meiosis is going to produce four haploid non-identical daughter cells, whereas mitosis will produce two identical diploid daughter cells. Therefore, during fertilization, when the sperm and egg fuse, two haploid cells will join to form one diploid cell. In the final diploid cell, half the chromosomes come from the egg, which is the mother, and half come from the sperm, which is the father. Meiosis will lead to genetic diversity. The four daughter cells produced in meiosis are not genetically identical. So sperm cells can vary from each other, and likewise, egg cells can be different from other egg cells. Any sperm cell can be matched with any egg cell, so many combinations can occur. In Down syndrome, there is an extra chromosome 21, so there are 47 in total. It's useful to remember this example, as this condition is a common focus of A-level exam questions. We will now go through the process of meiosis in more detail. Meiosis is essentially two rounds of mitosis, but with a few key differences. You start off with one diploid cell, but end up with four haploid cells. Next, we will look at nuclear divisions. Here's a review of what we looked at earlier. And here is the process in more detail. There are three main phases we'll be looking at. Just like we learned in the previous tutorial on mitosis, there is DNA replication and growth of the cell during interphase. It's made up of two parts, S phase, which is DNA replication, and G phase, which is G1 and G2, where new proteins and organelles are made. So we start off with interphase G1, move into S phase, and then interphase G2. Meiosis 1 results in the production of two diploid daughter cells. Each of the phases of meiosis 1 is exactly the same as normal mitosis except we referred to them as prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. Let's carry on from where we left off. We've now moved into prophase 1, and the next stage is metaphase 1. From there, we go into anaphase, and then telophase 1. During meiosis 1, a very important event known as crossing over will occur. This does not occur in mitosis. The remainder of meiosis 1 is exactly the same as mitosis. The homologous chromosomes are separated from each other and they're assorted into two diploid daughter cells. Let's keep going. We'll be repeating all the steps we saw earlier, so now we will go into prophase 2, followed by metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and finally telophase 2. This will result in four haploid daughter cells. As we've just seen, during meiosis 2, the two diploid daughter cells will divide in order to produce a total of four haploid daughter cells. In prophase 2, if the nuclear envelope was remade, it will break down again. The nucleolus will disintegrate and the chromosomes will condense to form spindles. Then, the chromosomes line up in the centre, or the equator, and bind to the spindle fibres at the centromeres. And the chromatids will get independently assorted. 
the spindle fibres pull out the chromatids to opposite ends of the cell. The centromere can then divide. In each cell, two nuclear envelopes will develop to form two haploid nuclei. The two cells will divide by cytokinesis to produce four haploid daughter cells. There are two key sources of genetic diversity in meiosis, crossing over and independent assortment. First, we will look at crossing over. Bivalence can develop, and then chiasmata can form. The chromosomes will break, and finally, recombination can occur. As we've just seen, the first step is that the two homologous chromosomes will come together, recombine, and then swap parts with each other. This results in the creation of new alleles and ensures that offspring are not genetically identical to their parents. Let's go through it again step by step. First, bivalence will develop. Then, the non-sister chromatids wrap around each other and they join up at chiasmata. The chromosomes can then break up at the chiasmata and sections of these may swap over between the sister chromatids. The final chromatids still have the same genes, but they may have different alleles. There is no crossing over in meiosis 1. Now we will look at the sources of genetic variation. Genetic diversity resulting from meiosis can be measured. First, we need to know that n is the number of homologous pairs. Due to the splitting in meiosis, the possible number of combinations of chromosomes in gametes is known as 2n. Due to independent assortment, each chromosome can undergo a further randomization and pairing. Therefore, the overall number of possible chromosome combinations in a single gamete cell is 2n squared. where n is the total number of pairs of homologous chromosomes in an organism. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, therefore n is equal to 23. 2n, therefore, is 46, and 2n squared is 2116. This means that there are 2116 different possible combinations of chromosomes which can be inherited by a single offspring. This is an alternative diagram. It's useful for you to understand the different diagrams because they can all look slightly different. The process is always the same, but some exam questions may have less well-drawn diagrams than shown here, making it harder to work out what's actually going on. Let's talk through this table together and fill in the gaps. We can look at the differences between mitosis and meiosis. In mitosis, we have two daughter cells, whereas in meiosis, we have four. Next, we'll look at the genetic diversity. In mitosis, the daughter cells are all identical. whereas in meiosis, they are all different. Compared to the parent cells, the daughter cells are genetically identical in mitosis, whereas in meiosis, again, they are different. Next, we'll look at the chromosome number. In the daughter cells in mitosis, they are diploid. Whereas in meiosis, they are haploid.
Now let's look at the stages. In mitosis, we only have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase 1, whereas in meiosis, we have stages 1 and stage 2. Next, we'll look at crossing over as a source of variation. There is no crossing over in mitosis, but there is in meiosis. Finally, let's look at the separation of homologous pairs. There is no separation in mitosis, but there is in meiosis, in anaphase 2. A comparison of mitosis and meiosis can easily be the focus of an exam question. Make sure you understand this information well, because it's key for you to understand these two types of cell division. We've now covered all the learning objectives for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you are unsure about. We've now completed lesson four. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.